Hey ladies and gents and welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about the best ways to break in your boots. So obviously today we are joined by a gentleman that needs no introduction. If you are a fan of boots, then more than likely you have come across his YouTube channel and his website called Stridewise. We are welcoming the Australian turned American Nick from Stridewise. I need, I need a bit of an introduction. Your channel is much bigger than mine is, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's, that, that's me. I have, I have a boot channel as well. Uh, yeah, check it out. Go and subscribe to it. I've got a whole lot of boot reviews and stuff, and it's really cool to be here in Tennessee with yeah. you guys. This yeah. is a beautiful first facility. First time in the South. Yeah, first time in the South. We've been eating a lot of barbecue. First time I met these guys, we had a bacon-wrapped shrimp with jalapeno on good it. Good stuff. And yeah, yeah. So and then having a good time. And some barbecue sweet tea. So yeah. he has been initiated uh, down here in the South. But uh, anyways, so today, we're again, we're talking about the best ways to break in your boots. And Nick, where do we start? Let's start with <laughs> number one, uh, get the right size, which obviously, like, it seems like that's a no-brainer. But it's really difficult uh, because so many boot companies now are online and everything. And also, boots have this really frustrating tendency of, like, the majority of them aren't actually your real size or your Very sneaker true. size, right? Yeah, it does make it difficult. Uh, we get a lot of people that send in boots, surprisingly. They find that they're too small and they bought them too small and then they want to have them stretched and that can't always happen. So again, you want to make sure that you are trying to get your foot measured correctly before you get the boot. And make sure that you're contacting the company and look to see uh, what their return policy is. So if it is wrong, you can go and get a new pair. and ask what their widths are and what's the best way to measure because everybody is going to have their own different way of doing it and they've got their own last and they know how it's how it's going to fit to their last so just contact the company and if you're ordering online as well something i found that's actually really helpful is read the reviews a lot of guys in the comment section will tell how that certain boot that they got fit and will often recommend sizing up sizing down so yeah i think um i know a lot of guys who actually they'll just to be safe they'll order two boots from uh two different sizes yeah. and they'll just return the one that doesn't fit which is like uh, I think that's very interesting. It's like a, a lot of extra prep for that one. But it's also, that's a reason, that's one of many reasons why I really, like, I, I don't really recommend ordering boots from anyone who doesn't do free returns because it's the, it's, the, it's the 21st century and like shoes are really tricky. Everyone has different sizes. So I, I only order boots really. I only recommend ordering boots from people who do free returns like for that reason because it's hard with shoes. Um, oh, and the other thing is, a lot of people actually don't know what their size is. They have sneakers, uh, mm -hmm. and the sneakers typically run big, right? So you really want to go to a shoe store and get your foot measured on a Brannock device, yeah. um, because I, I've, I've used to walk around thinking I was like a size 12 and a half, and I'm actually I'm 11 and a half, 11.6 or something, and that'll help you figure out yeah. what boost order. All right, so the second thing you want to do is to wear them around your house, preferably on carpet. You don't want to mar up the, the leather bottoms if they do come with leather, because then the company may have an issue. But wear them with thick socks, because what you'll find is leather is very porous. And as moisture and heat gets into the leather, it's gonna to start to stretch out. So wearing a thick pair of socks is gonna to help to um, kind of alleviate some of the pressure a little bit by pushing it out. And you also find that during the summer months, it's easier to break in a pair of boots than if you're wearing them in the winter months because it gets cold and things get stiff. Yeah, yeah I've actually found that this is one of the best methods for me, uh, whether I have dress shoes or boots. I will often wear a thicker pair of socks when I first get them out of the box and I'll wear them around my house throughout the day for a couple of days. And yeah, just because of the added thickness of that socks, it does push the leather out a little bit and helps to break them in. So that's the method that I use a lot. Yeah, the, the break-in process, it's, it's really like the process of the leather getting heated by your body and getting stretched out by your body's movements, by the movements of walking and everything. So when you get like a nice, a really, really thick pair of socks or sometimes a couple pairs of socks, that can be really useful for wearing them in around the house because it can sort of, it can speed up that break-in process because you're making your feet kind of extra warm and extra big. And also you'll find that once you've decided to keep your, your boots and you start to wear them, a lot of the uh, kind of stiffness and tightness is not also, uh, not just from the leather, but it's also from the stitches, whether it be like a Goodyear welted boot, the stitches are very snug, they're very tight, and as you start to wear them, and it may take you know uh, weeks or a couple of months, that those stitches will start to relax a little bit, and that'll also help to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the third tip is a quick one, uh, to slap on a Band-Aid, because like once you've worn the shoes a couple of times, you'll have a decent idea as to where you're getting some friction on your feet, and that's where blisters are most likely to form. 
So uh, a really simple uh, quick fix for this one is sort of like a bit of preventative medicine that kind of goes a long way, is you can put a Band-Aid on your feet on those areas, and that'll help to give you a bit more protection as the leather softens up and becomes less of like a menace to the, uh, the constitution of your skin. Um, but the one thing you want to do, you don't want to get like one of those little plastic Mickey Mouse Band-Aids you have when you're a kid. You want to get those nice, thick, uh, wide sort of uh, cotton or material plaster ones. Or so moleskin. Moleskin is a good one. They make, they make Band-Aids out of them. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. So you want to get those, those serious grown-up kind of band-aids, um, and also you can cut them out the right shape so it can form uh, over the right part of your foot. So uh, that's, that's a quick one. That can save you, some, save you some heat down the road. Okay, another thing that you can do is bring, a, in, bring an old pair of boots or, or sneakers with you. So what I mean by that is when you get a new pair of boots, it's best to wear your new pair earlier in the morning before your feet really start to swell. And that way you can wear them around, and before it starts to hurt too badly, you can take those off, set them aside, and then put on your you know, worn-in sneakers or boots. Uh, what I often do is bring those pairs with me, whether I'm at my office, at my desk, or maybe put them in the trunk of your car. Um, that way, again, you have a fresh pair that you can wear with you so that you're not having to wear that new pair throughout the whole day, risk getting blisters. You wear them up to the point that maybe it starts to hurt a little bit and you say, okay, I'm taking these off for the day. I'll put on my broken in shoes. Don't try to break in a pair of boots if you're gonna go tour a city for the first time and you're gonna be walking all over. That is not the time to break in boots. That happens a lot of time. People think I'm gonna buy a new pair of boots, I go on a new yeah. vacation, I wanna look cool in these pictures. And then all like, the time. it's exactly. just, just kinda of ruined it. Yeah. You'll be me, in the, pain. The hardest break in I ever had was Dayton Boots. It's like a little company in Canada. And it was just an, it was an absolute nightmare. And I realized quite quickly, like I could get an hour out of them maybe, uh, and then I had to take them off and put them in my bag and put on a new pair of shoes and then wait like two or three days before I tried again. It was, it was horrible, was but like, yeah, even if it's like a, a light break in, yeah, just carry some extra sneakers or boots with you for when it's about to get bad. The fifth tip we have is to give your feet a break between wearing boots. That's, that kind of leads on to what I was saying earlier about the Dayton boots, but like a lot of guys don't know that you're, even after your boots are broken in, you're not supposed to wear the same pair of boots uh, two days in a row, or more than two days in a row, more than one day in a row. Because the thing is, when you wear the boot all day, you get like moisture and uh, kind of like funk inside the boot. And you, what you want to do is let the boots rest for a day with a cedar shoe tree in them, because that helps to kind of Absolutely. suck up the moisture, keep the, the, the seams, the stitching from like rotting over time, help it maintain its shape. Um, when it comes to breaking in, Basically, you just want to give your feet a rest uh, after a day of wearing the boots because like, your feet are probably going to be a bit beaten up. The break-in is going to be even worse. Like, you're going to be telling people I had this terrible break-in with these pair of boots because you'll have worn them like, every day for a week and that's going to be a total nightmare on your feet. So importantly, give your feet a rest after you've worn the boots for a bit, especially if they're new. But even if they're not, and again, a lot of guys don't know this, especially because they fall in love with their boots, they want to wear them all the time, but they'll last a lot longer if you let them rest a day between wears with a shoe tree in them. Plus, that gives you an excuse to buy another pair of boots. All right, one of the next things you can do is to try to uh, kind of speed up the process in your downtime. So for instance, you get a boot like this. This is straight out of the box. This is a White's boot, and these are stiff. Now, where you're going to feel most of your stiffness is going to be uh, along the, the ball of the foot and also in the ankles. Um, now, like we were talking about this morning, I had a broken ankle when I was playing football when I was in high school, and so when I try a boat, uh, a boot like this, it automatically starts to rub. So I know, hey, this is where it's, you know, you know your own foot. Just sit on the sofa, put on a movie, and just start to try to massage the leather, and as much as you can, just try to imitate wearing it, and uh, that will also help to try to break it in so that when you are wearing it, you can then take some other preventative measures. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. If you can just work those areas where the boots crease, like Heath was saying, it's gonna speed it up a lot faster rather than having to wear it out and trying to bend it that way. Another thing that I also do uh, to work that crease, you, like Heath said, you can use your hand just while you're watching TV, but sometimes I'll put on the boot and I'll just stand there and I'll just kind of bend my foot back and forth like this, um, that way, you know, you're not wearing it, not getting blisters, but you're able to actually bend it as your foot would now. And don't, don't lace it up real tight. Yeah. Leave it a little bit looser so you're not putting all the pressure on it, but you're still being able to get a little bit of flex in there. Yeah, the idea is to soften the fibers of the leather. Like it's just like it's stiff and it's mm -hmm. new and that's what, yeah, that's what breaking in does. And like your heat does it and your moving around does it as well. Yep. 
but you can just give it like a little massage. It's, it's skin. It's like giving it like a little massage. And walking does that, but also just you can just do it with your hands and it'll speed up the process a little bit. Okay, the next thing you can do is scuff up the heels. Now, where's the one place that so many of us get blisters when we're wearing our shoes? It's always in the heel area. And the reason that that happens is because so many of the shoes we wear are lined on the inside, which means that the leather is really smooth, it's not roughed up, and therefore there's not much, uh, I guess was it traction you could say, where you know, the fibers are actually you know, adhering to the, the back of your foot or your sock. So what you could do, and here, let me borrow that boot for a second, is take a little piece of high grit sandpaper. You don't want to get crazy. Again, just you know, very high grit. And just work that sandpaper down along the, the back heel area of the boot. And you can just rub it along, again, wherever your heel would be. And you just want to rough up those fibers a little bit and that will help to speed up the process so that those fibers loosen up and will hold on to the back of your sock and won't, uh, won't rub a blister. So just another tip that we've done that actually helps out. Yeah, that's why a lot of, uh, a lot of shoes out there, they'll have like a little, like a uh, common projects, I think, the sneaker, like it's leather lined and very fancy, but they still like they'll glue or they'll attach some suede to the heel, the inside yeah. of the heel, just to help with traction. And also it looks kind of fancy as well. So a lot of times you'll see that like kind of glued or attached on the inside of the shoe. But a lot of times it isn't. Yeah. And so then you just you rough up the rough out with some yeah. sandpaper. So it actually helps. Yeah. 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 Don't do that step if you're going to try to return a boot. Yeah. They're not going to be very happy if you do that. Make sure you are happy with the boots. You're going to keep them. Then you can do that. All right, the eighth tip we have is to uh, condition your boots. Like this is especially useful if it's the leather upper is feeling really, really stiff. Um, there's always like different areas of the boots that might be more difficult with breaking in, like the heel and so on. But if the leather upper is feeling really stiff, you can condition the boots or you can soften it with like a leathery leather softener, I think it's called, a tenderly leather softener rather, or, or uh, Venetian shoe cream as well as a very popular conditioner. So you can apply that to the leather of the upper and that softens the leather and that can actually go a long way. Typically, uh, you know, even when boots aren't new, you want to condition them with something like Venetian shoe cream or something, Sophia's Renovator, uh, probably once or twice a year anyway. But if you do this at the beginning, it can be a little bit annoying to know that like you've got new shoes and that you're already spending money on them getting conditioner and stuff, but keep the conditioner, you're gonna use it down the line and it'll help to soften the boots at the get-go as well. All right, so the next step you can do to uh, get your shoes to fit a little bit better if they're not broken in is to put a stretcher in them or take them to a place to be stretched. Now, this is an example of a shoe stretcher, old fashioned, make sure they're made out of wood. You can buy these on eBay or some of them you can just you know, find them online, some store may sell them and uh, they come in different shapes. You just stick them in your shoe and then you crank this and it widens up. They do have little knobs that if you have a certain point on the boot that's getting a little bit more pressure, you can actually add little pieces of uh, metal that go on there and when you stretch it, it'll alleviate the pressure. So, you know, you have a sore spot on your foot or, you know. Um, the other thing you can do is to actually treat the leather with this or just treat the leather with a shoe spray. It's actually called like liquid stretch or shoe stretch. Sometimes uh, they come in a can and you can just spray the outside of the shoe, spray the inside of the shoe and it gets into the fibers and then you can stretch them or you can wear them. And what that does is sometimes it helps to relax the fibers of the leather while you wear them and then it won't shrink back. So, um, you can, like I said, you can buy these yourself or you can go to your local cobbler. Now this is something that we don't do. I actually had to blow dust off of this. It was in a box in the back, but uh, it's very subjective. You know, if you go to your local cobbler, then if it's not enough, then you can, you know, try it on and you can say, can you do a little bit more? But it's harder when you do bell in. But that is a great suggestion to try to uh, speed up the process as well. How long does it take? Um, we generally recommend leaving it on like, we usually tell our customers three to five days yeah. uh, because the, you don't you don't want to rush it. We've had customers come in before and say, I need these shoes by tomorrow. And the problem is the fibers of the leather have to really stretch out. So the longer you can leave it on, the more it gives those fibers time to actually stretch out and stay there when you take the uh, shoe stretcher out. Yeah, if you stick them in and you just start cranking full blast, then a lot of times it's too much pressure for the leather and also for the stitches on the welt. Yeah. So you can actually pop the stitches holding the welt. You want to just incrementally do it a little bit more. The next day you can do a little bit more and just naturally and slowly let it stretch out. Yep.
Uh, number 10, this is a really quick one. You can just try a different lacing combination. So like if you've got a pair of boots, like white, uh, you, can, like, uh, you can use the lacing here and then like skip a couple of eyelets in the middle and then put it up the top. This is especially useful if uh, it's particularly tight around the midfoot and when it's all totally laced up, it's like kind of nightmarish. You can make that a little bit easier by leaving it unlaced in the middle and that'll like let it, uh, get, let it like stretch out a little bit more uh, over a longer period of time and then won't be quite as tough on the midfoot. Like you give it a bit more breathing room while the boot is stretching. And this can be especially useful with a boot like White's which has like an unbelievably big wide gusseted tongue so there's like a lot of leather here to break in all right another thing you can do and this is kind of a, a temporary thing is you can go to a drugstore and you know they got like a dr shoals foot section there's little pads that you can get that's adhesive on one side and padding or felt padding on the other side you can put them on your tongue you can put them in the back on the heel uh, they're not going to last forever because it's not like really glued in it's just a very light adhesive but it's great for the breaking in process and then you can take them off and uh, it, the job's already done. But it definitely will help to alleviate a little bit of pressure and they're very cheap, so. And a lot of shoe cobblers carry them as well. So if you don't want to, if you're not sure exactly what you should be looking for, if you take it to your local shoe cobbler, a lot of those guys will have the, those tongue pads, those heel pads and a lot of the, the tools needed to, uh, to take care of that. Yeah, the, co the couple of the like shoe doctors, right? Like you can try and take care of like your problem yourself, but if you go to a professional, they'll be able to walk you through, all right, where does it hurt? Yeah. Does, you know, do you actually need padding for this? Or is like a band-aid gonna be better? Or should you get a shoe stretcher? Yeah, like exactly. professionals can be, can be very helpful with that one. So yeah. you, you can buy these padding things yourself, um, but uh, it's always quite useful to take it to a cobbler as well. Okay, so our l final one, don't listen to dumb tips that you find on the internet. Uh, this one happens a lot and we've had shoes brought in to us that folks have read things on the internet or watched videos that weren't good advice and they've almost ruined their shoes or boots. So what are some things that you guys have heard uh, that you would consider dumb ideas? Uh, filling your boot with water and letting them dry. Uh, I guess water makes leather soft, I suppose you could say that. Uh, so they'll literally fill their boots with water or like submerge them for an extended period of time and then let them dry. But like so much water like that. There's a difference between walking through like dewy grass and submerging your boots in water for a long period of time because that can cause the leather to rot or warp uh, or uh, yeah, I mean, I guess stretch as well, but it can also shrink. Uh, that's, a, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, I've heard of guys literally taking a shower with their new boots on. And um, it worked with jeans. <laughs> That's the problem. Well, one of the things, if you're going to get a boot, and especially if it's a high end boot, uh, a lot of times the heel counter inside is actually made out of veg tan leather. And if it gets too saturated um, and you take those boots off before they can dry, that can get warped. Something can get, you know, cr it can get crushed and it can lose its shape. So, it, yeah, it, a little bit of water, like walking through a dewy grass, is one thing. Uh, but completely saturating it, it's just, yeah, I wouldn't recommend that at all. Wearing wet socks is, an, is another one that's kind of similar. Like they'll, they'll, they'll wear sopping wet socks uh, in an attempt to wet it, but not too much, but like that's gonna give you blisters. I would think that'd be painful. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've never done a wet sock. I would think that that's only gonna cause blisters. So yeah. <laughs> but yeah. see, blisters come from heat and water is wet. So like it, it stands to three-year-old wisdom, uh, yeah. wisdom yeah. but- uh, A little bit of sweat's one thing, but yeah. um, sopping sock is. You can also like, people, people they blast their, their boots with a hairdryer as well. Yeah. Um, you know, some people think making it wet, some people think making it super, super dry is gonna help it break in. Um, but that's like, that can really sort of damage and dry yeah, out the leather sure. fibers as yeah, well. Yeah, if you put too much heat on your shoes, cause I've seen heat guns and everything else. Yeah, I mean, you're, you don't want to put too much heat on the leather at one time because it, it'll really mess up the fiber. Yeah, I mean, it, it's because it's skin. Yeah. And that's, that's the whole point of conditioning your yeah. boots, which ensures the longevity that keeps them moist. It's, it's, it's a moisturizer for the, because it's skin. And then people say that they're gonna blast it with a hairdryer and that'll make the boots work better. And it's- cool. Definitely yeah, a smarter idea to just put the conditioner on. <laughs> um, what's another one? I think one more I've heard is spraying alcohol on your shoes. Uh, especially, like I said, we get dress shoe guys, you know, putting alcohol on it even for your dress boots. Some boots come with patinas on there. And if you spray alcohol on it, you're going to mess that up really bad. I mean, I, again, that's for more of a dress boot. Um, but even any boots, like that, that can damage the color and the dye as well. Especially if it's a lighter color, tan, brown, something like that. Um, yeah, yeah you, 
you drop good. a bunch of alcohol on it and it can leave some major stains. Yeah. Definitely not a good one. So don't, don't rush the breaking in process, I guess. Like, I mean, these tips are pretty good and they will like in, in some respects like speed it up. Like, you know, for instance, like the, the wearing the thicker socks that can like have a little bit more heat and a little bit more movement than normal and that can speed it up a little bit. But guys will always be like, all right, I got a new pair of boots, I love them. Um, they're, I, I want to break them in, but I want to be able to wear them like tomorrow or next week. But um, you have to be patient with this stuff. The whole, the whole thing with boots is like, it's, a, it's old, slow fashion. It's an investment. <laughs> you, you invested in a good pair of boots. Don't ruin them. Just go slow, slow and steady, and they'll be there for you know, the rest of your life. And when in doubt, talk to your local cobbler. Yep. <laughs> All right, folks, so I think that just about does it. Hopefully these tips will help and you've taken a few of them uh, to heart. So remember, the next time you get boots, definitely make sure you're trying one of the tips that we provided uh, and don't do any of the crazy ones that you've read out there. Also, uh, all of you guys, if you have anything else in mind, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear some of the other ideas or things that you have come up with and maybe some good ones, some bad ones. We'd definitely love to read those and, and kind of see ourselves. So again, a big thanks to you, Nick, for being here. We appreciate you flying down from New York. No, it was my, it was my pleasure. I really just wanted the barbecue when you guys are like a side effect of me being in Nashville. It, it was uh, worth it. Yeah, it was, it was very worth it. <laughs> guys, if you have not checked out Nick's channel, definitely go to StrideWise and also check out his website, which is stridewise.com, where it has a lot of valuable information uh, regarding mostly boots, but he also does, you know, fill jackets and yeah, yeah, uh, raw denim, and, yeah. leather jackets, a little bit uh, of everything, bags as well, a lot of bag stuff. So definitely full of good information. Okay, guys. Again, thanks for joining us, and until next time, y'all have a good one.